world full of non-renewable, carbon-emitting fossil fuels? Hardy High School steps up to take the challenge of creating the operable solar go -kart. Our journey began at FGCU on November 2nd, 2013. Pumped and ready to go, six students from Hardy Senior High arrived on campus and tore into the flat containing a combustion engine go-kart. Assembly was an act of teamwork and the unscrambling of a massive diagram set provided for us. Upon assembly, the gas engine was removed immediately to allow for the electric motor to be put in. While at FGCU, the team got the chance to take a test drive in the cart that the university had transformed into a solar go cart. Gaining a bit of knowledge on how to handle the cart on the road, test driving was a valuable part of the day. By the time that all the team had gotten to the chance to take their joyride, the cart was completely built and ready to be loaded upon a truck that Alan J. Automotives of Wachula generously allowed us to borrow for the occasion. On reaching Hardy Senior High School, the go-kart began undergoing a magical transformation. Some non-essential parts were taken off for the time being so that they were not damaged while work was being conducted. The motor was also fully assembled and, on a, and a mounting bracket, taken from an old bed frame, was measured and fitted to be attached at a later time. A first problem that was shortly encountered with the cart was sticky, tight, and quite frankly, awful brakes. To deal with the situation, the team pushed, since there was not an engine quite yet, the cart around with one member inside pressing the brakes, trying to make them work more efficiently. The brake dilemma was helped to be solved by Mr. Ward, the auto tech teacher at the high school. The wheels bolts were the next point of interest. Major issues with friction became very apparent while the cart was being pushed around. To account for the friction, adjustments were made to loosen the wheels, increasing efficiency. An essential part to the solar go-kart, besides the solar panels, is the batteries that the solar panels will charge and run the electric motor. Our cart uses two 12-volt batteries that are connected in a series to get a 24-volt current. They were placed in, a basket, in the basket with a wooden frame around them to prevent any movement of the batteries while the cart is racing. In the future, the batteries are hoped to be placed at a lower area of the cart to lower the center of gravity. The mounting bracket, now at a proper length and with the proper holes cut into it, was ready to be placed on the cart. Using two U-bolts, the bracket was inserted onto the back of the cart where the old combustion engine used to be. With some adjustments, the motor was finally attached. A 12-tooth sprocket was attached and the number 41 chain had to be adjusted slightly by Allen J. Automotives of Wachula. The next challenge was figuring out the potentiometer. One student took apart the old brake system and used it as the pulling mechanism for the arm of the potentiometer. It was then mounted to the floor of the cart by the gas pedal. Springs were added to the arm so the return would be greater. Along with the potentiometer, the speed controller was attached to the back of the go-kart on a sheet of plexiglass. This position allowed for wiring from the potentiometer to be attached, but also allowed accessibility for a computer to be plugged in to adjust the speed controller to the desired settings. Students soon learned how to solder wiring to be attached to the batteries, potentiometer, solar boost, and motor. Finally, after many hours of work, the car had become an electric machine that was fully functional. However, the solar panels still had to be attached. The second phase of our challenge was to make the cart solar powered. To enhance the output of the solar panels, our team attached a, sky, a blue sky solar boost on the passenger side of the cart. Placement was chosen so that the driver could glance over and see either the output of the system, the output of the solar panels, or the charge of the batteries. We like pizza. Though a diode is normally necessary in the system, we attached an on-off switch, an ignition and a power cutoff switch that will allow us to control the current of the electricity. It will also prevent energy backflow from the batteries to the solar panels. When not in the sun, the switch is placed in the off position so that it will cut off the flow from of power to the batteries from the panels. Finally, the panels were ready to be placed on top of the cart. The frame is made of aluminum angle and attached on the side of the carts. Due to the distance we would be traveling and the uncertainty of how the cart would be transported, we made it so the solar panels could be removed with relative ease. New, quick disconnects were ordered and placed on the panels. While driving the FGCU cart, students noticed the effects of the panels on the roof of the cart. To reduce the top heaviness, lightweight aluminum was used as the bracing system for the panels. The panels were also shifted approximately 4 inches to the driver's side. Of course, just like any other project of this nature, there were a few hills we had to climb before the journey could continue. Before putting on the final brace, we decided to try and transport the cart down to the track for preliminary testing. 
However, one of the wheels of the vehicle hit a speed bump and bent the rear brace, putting off testing for another day for the damage to be repaired. Finally, the cart was successfully transported to the track. Even though we were having successful trial runs, we were not completely satisfied with the speed, curve response, and adjustments to the throttle. Even though there is still much room for improvement, we feel as though the major problems were solved. We hope to be highly competitive in next year's race. Our dependence on fossil fuels can no longer be sustained and has had a large negative impact on our world. We cannot wait for others to solve this problem. Through this project, we hope to inspire others to use sustainable energy.